Vote tally is underway in Burundi after voters cast their ballots in a referendum that could extend President Pierre Nkurunziza's rule until 2034. Polling stations closed at 4 p.m. yesterday and the Independent National Election Commission has 48 hours to announce the results. About 4.8 million people, just under half the population, signed up to vote the commission. The referendum asks voters to say yes or no to constitutional amendments that would allow Nkurunziza to seek to two more seven-year terms after the, his current one expires in 2020. Let's now cross over to Burundi where Makna Maswa is following up this referendum election and now joins us. Mac, good afternoon. How is the situation like? results from the referendum here in Bujumbura, Burundi. And uh, one of the few things that we've noted is that uh, the turnout uh, tends to be very high, particularly in the rural areas. And uh, here in uh, Bujumbura city, we had uh, the opposition that was for the no, uh, get, getting as close as possible to, to the yes team by garnering about 44% uh, versus 53 for the yes. But uh, when you go to other particular areas of interest, particularly Chibitoke province, where it uh, people were killed in uh, um, in an attack on uh, May 11th. The turnout surprisingly was at 80%. Now, when we look at uh, other areas of interest, particularly Ngozi province in the north, where the president hails also, the turnout was also high, but uh, again uh, the interesting results are that uh, the yes got over 80%, while the no garnered about 10%. Uh, the same case was also witnessed in other areas, such as the central uh, uh, province. But again, we have also had other reports coming online and also cited on international media, and we felt it was quite important to speak to some of the government officials. And I'm now joined by one of the presidential advisors. Kindly introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Willy Nyamitwe. I'm senior advisor to the president of the Republic of Burundi. Uh, Amnesty International have uh, released a report uh, citing uh, the stifling of the opposition. Uh, what do you say about it? You know, um, Amnesty International and some other NGOs are really embarked in a campaign to tarnish the image of Burundi. They are spreading lies. They are spreading fabrications. They are trying only to manipulate the opinion. So those um, uh, statements are only intended to tarnish the image of Burundi. But, uh, but as you are here, I think that you are living witnesses of how Burundi is at peace. Burundi is a peaceful country. Uh, yes, there are some people who are trying to come to cross the border from uh, the DRC or Rwanda sometimes to come to, um, to, 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 to kill people and go back there. But in Burundi, Burundi itself, uh, in all parts of Burundi, the country is at peace. Uh, let us uh, discuss matters online. I've uh, just uh, gone through Twitter. There is a handle uh, by the name I Burundi, and people are saying there that uh, SENI, uh, the electoral body, has been compromised so that it uh, inverts the results. According to them, some of the results uh, that have been, uh, the provisional results that have been uh, released, they say they have been inverted. They say that uh, according to them, the, the no team was leading, but uh, SENI was compromised to uh, invert them. What about that. I'm not responding to anonymous uh, Twitter handles. You know, I Burundi is anonymous. Uh, it's a not um, an individual, it's not an, an organization, it's a just um, a, peop a person who hides himself under anonymous, uh, an anonymous handle and continues to, and who continues to, 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 to spread lies. So uh, if an, an anonymous um, person uh, criticizes uh, the electoral commission or criticizes the government of Burundi, do you think that um, Burundi officials have to respond to that? No, we don't have to, re to respond to, to any lie or any uh, rumor w which is being spread on social media. I will say that as a government you bear the responsibility of uh, responding to that because it's talking about you. Because let, let, me, let me put it in, the, in this way. Um, we, 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 we have uh, we, we are conducting a process which has been conducted in a peaceful manner and um, in a democratic manner 
And people went by themselves to the, the, the polling station. They have voted some for yes, others for, for no. Um, especially here in the capital, Bujumbura, uh, there was um, a tight um, a, a, a tight difference between the yes and, and the no. Um, I'm coming from Gagara, and my, my, my Gagara, uh, where I've been uh, to vote, the yes has been beaten by the no. So this is democracy. So the, the Electoral Commission, I don't think that it has been compromised. And if anybody comes out with an uh, anonymous account and uh, criticizes or spreads information, these information don't really uh, need to be uh, taken into account because anybody can even come and talk about you, uh, but anonymously. And this will only be put aside so that people have to move forward uh, because we cannot continue to... Uh, to people have to, 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 to say, OK, I'm this organization. I know this information and I have evidences. So you cannot come without evidences and uh, say that uh, this person or this organization is compromised. International media are quoting reports and reports basically have to be compiled, verified and uh, they, they are citing what they, they feel they have tangibles. What do you say about that? Some media houses uh, or some journalists are only lazy. They only copy and pass. I've seen this. Um, I'm in charge of media and communication. I can see that e the AFP, for example, can just um, write down a story and anybody will only copy and paste, copy and paste. These are not evidences because some journalists also are compromised. When you come on the ground in Burundi, you can see by yourself that Burundi is not a country on fire. So, but some journalists are continuing to say that in Burundi, people are being killed on a daily basis. No, uh, we saw in this campaign, uh, in, in all the parts of, uh, of Burundi, the campaign was for the no or for the yes was uh, peacefully conducted. The referendum day, uh, it was uh, a day, uh, a peaceful day. Uh, it, there was not even a single gunshot. So which means that uh, some journalists don't take time to verify what they've, they have been, they, they are being fed as information. So people need really to double check what they are getting as uh, information before to, to spread those informations which can sometimes and, and, uh, and, al and almost uh, all the time wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, some quotas say that uh, this uh, referendum is a barometer test for 2020 general election and uh, a lot of interest again on whether the current president will run or not. Any word on that? Look, um, we have a draft of constitution that has been submitted to referendum and there's not a single article that says that uh, the incumbent president will vie again in 2020. You know, the, uh, the incumbent president uh, belongs to the ruling party, the CNDD, FDD, which has the right to appoint uh, anybody to be its candidate for any election. So let's wait. People are only speculating. We have to wait for the ruling party members to sit down and decide who's going to be their candidate for the 2020 elections. I uh, thank you very much for your time. You are welcome. Uh, that is uh, Mr. Willy Nyamitwe, the presidential ambassador, uh, the presidential advisor here in Burundi, just uh, responding to some of the questions and, squ and queries concerning the referendum and uh, the political situation in Burundi moving forward. As it is now, we are still waiting for all the provisional results for the referendum that was just concluded yesterday to continue trickling in as we move ahead here in Bujumbura, Burundi. Back to you.